Hello everybody, welcome to Shimoda in Kanagawa on the very bottom of Izu Peninsula. This is a, a very historic place. For those that are watching, you've seen the title. This is where Commodore Perry landed in 1854 with the black ship. This being one of the two ports that America could trade with Japan back then. This is still the Edo period and uh, the Meiji Restoration not taking place for another, what, 12 years or so. And right there is a statue of Commodore Perry where the landing spot. We're gonna take you into there and also take you down the Perry Road. And uh, I have a map right here. We're gonna kind of uh, take a look at this town and um, um, kind of feel the history. I think that that's kind of uh, something that's really special when you come to a place like this, especially yeah. since I'm also American. This feels kind of like a like a hollowed grounds in a way. Um, of course, the conventions of Kanagawa, where the treaties were signed, was in uh, near Yokohama. In fact, just away from Yokohama Bay, where that big Gundam statue, the robot, is about uh, 250 meters away from there, is the the location where they signed the treaty, opening up Japan to the United States. But um, they also. You know, this is where Perry also came. It's, it's kind of sketchy to me, all of the details. But we're going to do a pretty good job of, of uh, investigating this up close. Now, this anchor apparently was gifted from the United States and given to Japan from one of the black ships. <laughs> we're going to find that out. Here, soak it in. There's the Commodore right there. In all his glory, the bust of him. Uh, it's kind of neat to see this here in, in Japan, of all places, right? This is so deep in there for a lot of Americans. This isn't a place I think you're going to be able to make your make it to for the majority of people. If you come to Japan, you probably want to just stick around Tokyo and the tourist sites unless you have a lot of time. It says here, uh, Peri is written there in Katakana on the top, uh, uh, Commodore, the monument of the arrival of the U.S. and Commodore Perry's squadron. Not just one black ship, but the whole squadron. That's so cool. I'm gonna show you the friendship flame in a second. Let's take a look at the sign here, which is uh, lays everything out for us. Monument to Perry's Landing. In 1853, Commodore Matthew C. Perry sailed into Uraga in Tokyo Bay and asked that Japan open itself to foreign trade. Next, March 1854, he gave them a year before he came back, a little bit over. Uh, he returned to Japan with a squadron of nine ships, three steamships, which was pretty impressive back then, to press his demands. Two ships were dispatched to Shimoda to investigate whether it could supply the water, charcoal, and other materials needed by American vessels. Vessels after the conclusion of the Treaty of Kanagawa, there it is, the Treaty of Kanagawa, seven of Perry's ships entered the port of Shimoda. So after they signed there, they came here. This monument was established to commemorate the landing of Perry and the sailors of his squadron at this point. This is where the first, um, uh, I guess like a U.S. consulate uh, was set up right here too. The pedestal for the monument is topped by a bust of Perry and the anchor was a present from the U.S. Navy. The monument was designed by Tokujiro Murata. Very cool. It's a present from the Navy. Thank you guys over there in Yokosuka, not too far away. Uh, this is the Friendship Flame. Let's take a quick look at this here. Uh, the 150th anniversary of the 1854 signing of the U.S. Japan Treaty, which wasn't too long ago. The 150 years of uh, bilateral relations. Commodore Perry sailed into Japan, yada yada, you know that, and it's signed here by, I guess, the mayor of the time. Uh, this comes from Newport, Rhode Island, apparently. And uh, it's kind of neat because this flame is an American flame. Let it burn brightly in friendship. It's cool. So I'm gonna be, I'm gonna film uh, part of the closing of an episode that I'm making on this topic. This is what's been taken so long with the main channel. And while we do that in glorious 720p, because the signal isn't exactly the greatest here, we're gonna go take a look at Perry Road right now. And I'm scouting this out because I might film this as well. Oh, you know what is really interesting? Is you see this right here? This tree is a, a I believe it's a kawazu cherry blossom tree and it's finished. The blossoms are actually done here. That's pretty crazy, right? That's a kawazu cherry blossom. So uh, I passed the city of kawazu coming here, which is also very cool. Hi, John. I'm glad I saw your Gundam video uh, since my first vacation is the last. Oh, I just missed that there. Last time Gundam Factory will open for the last time. I'm glad that you'll 
be able to go and see that. I knew that if I told people that, they wouldn't want to miss it. There'd be a lot of disappointment if I didn't. So I'm, I'm really glad that that was, that was useful for you. It's so quiet here. The microphone is pretty much on me, so it, it sounds like I'm louder than I actually am. All right, people say, you're disturbing the peace. There's actually nobody around to disturb, which is kind of cool. Just soak that in. That's a bit of spring for those that are coming in a couple of months. You're gonna see, the, see some more of that. Wow, look at the sun. It's so impressive when you have the blue skies like today. All right, this is Perry Road down here. And uh, I want to take you down, down this area. It's an old section of the town. And just kind of investigate this, yeah? And I hope that the signal stays strong. Now, it's famous for the black ship. I could show you where we are quickly right now. Let me do that. You can see Tokyo right in the center of the screen right there. Izu Peninsula is right in, this, in, the, in the bottom part. We're going to zoom right into it here. And Shimoda is at the very bottom of that. Look at that. It's the biggest town on the, on the bottom, uh, right on a beautiful little uh, a bay, harbor, I guess you could call it. And it's a, a, a safe haven for ships, which is perfect for landing and, and getting water and, and trade, I guess. It's a little bit far from Edo or Tokyo at the time, but you know, this is part of the compromise. Uh, I think Perry had made some demands and, and uh, he didn't want Nagasaki, that Dutch had that. So he wanted other places. So he got in 1854, uh, according to the Treaty of Kanagawa, this, as a trading port and Hakodate up in Hokkaido, which is another trading port. And uh, a lot of history from the 1850s uh, onwards uh, is a reflection of that Perry opening it up. And uh, Perry, of course, when he got back to the US was greatly rewarded. Um, I think it was like seven, uh, the equivalent to about $700,000 today where he was able to buy a house and all this other stuff. Kind of neat uh, history. Coming here was absolutely stunning. Uh, I took the, uh, I took the um, express train and you can see sometimes the Shinkansen isn't the best way to get around. Just go a little bit slower and look at how you can just soak up the uh, scenery. The Shinkansen is just way too fast to do something like that. It's absolutely stunning. Um, and I even got uh, Mount Fuji here. We were able to get just a glimpse of it before we turned left to <laughs> add Atami uh, leaving this area. Mount Fuji still got a pretty strong cap of snow on the top. I'll show you some more video of the train and, and whatnot as we go along here, but it's funny. They have, because it's the black ship, they have black ice cream. I'm gonna have to try to find that. That looks really good. All right, let's go, let's go down to Perry Road. And again, I'm, I actually have uh, uh, things that I have to film here. So we're gonna keep this at about 15, 20 minutes. But you can get a vibe of the city. Now, I, it took me about 15 minutes to walk from the station to here. Here's the map. The station's on the very top of this map. And I walked, I walked uh, right to the water side there, the river. And then I walked along the river. It was really quiet, really scenic. I think I saw about eight people. People in front of me are, are the most people I've seen in one spot. Very few tour groups. Most of them are Kawazu for the cherry blossoms over there right now. So we're gonna take a, take a left here and take a look at Perry Road. Let's do that. It's quite windy today as well. But it's warm. Takoyaki, do you see that? Takoyaki. Erdogan, thank you for, the re for recommending this slow and scenic travel idea. Absolutely don't take, don't overtake the Shinkansen just because you can. I'm telling y'all that uh, local train pass and the, the JR East Pass, which is what I got, is 27,000 yen or like a hundred and seventy dollars or something like that it's worth it just slow it down you know i might have to get some takoyaki from here look at that look at the smoke coming out of the chimney up there all right let's let's go to the other side of perry road look at this this is so scenic i walked i walked along this small road you see between the water all the way to almost the station and it was it's just a really nice walk look at the old gas lantern here now electric i'm sure yeah but still and the way that the road changes 
from asphalt to, oh, I gotta show you this, from asphalt to cinder blocks. <laughs> I guess that's what it is. But we've got a, a manhole. Hola, look at that. That's the black ship. Very cool, and uh, I'll, I'll show you some more of that. I'm sure that they've got more down this road here. They did open up Japan by force, and Japan was wise not to, to mess around. After Perry came in in 1853 uh, with the threats, he, he left, and Japan quickly built a battery called Daiba, uh, Daiba Battery. It's right off the coast of Odaiba, right by the, you can see from the Rainbow Bridge. And that's a result of the threats. They never had to use it because in the end, they had to just give up because there's just no way. He, they, he could fire cannons all the way to the Imperial Palace and Tokyo being made mostly, Edom being made mostly of wood, that would have been devastating as we saw in World War II during the fire bombings of March 10th. Um, absolutely, look at this cannon from 1829, a 30 pound, very cool. Wow. is so pretty look at that house the um the white and the black pattern there very reminiscent of the not, not for me but nos nostalgic for those that are 100 years old it's the old style you see it a lot in warehouses and uh, stronger buildings which probably needed to be because of typhoons coming through here you see the kawazu cherry blossoms uh have finished down this road the last couple of days. It does feel like spring today. Wow. You guys are getting a treat. Oh, this is so beautiful. It's gonna open up at... at wow. It's old, looks like a storehouse or very strongly made building made of uh, uh, stone. And the copper plate plating, ah, The copper plating on the side is turned green. So it could have been something like a, yeah, storehouse or a bank or. Got some duckies down here. Today it's a cafe. <laughs> Look at that. That's awesome. That's a perfect place for a cafe. It's not open, but... According to the Google Maps, a lot of these places went out of business during the, the uh, you know, those years, because a lot of tourists didn't come, nobody was coming here. And uh, today, they're starting to come back, little by little. I saw it was, it was more vibrant than I expected when I got to the station for a weekday. On the weekends, there's certainly a lot more people. This isn't a, I think this was a, a restaurant here? Yeah. It's Italian restaurant. Pizza and one drink. That's a good deal. It's open from noon. So not quite. That's a beautiful location for an Italian place. I think American cuisine would be more fitting. Eat some burgers. Street and entrance to the chief temple of Shimoda here. I love the historical uh, uh, photos to kind of give you the scene of what it was like. And uh, is that the building, the one that's in the photo? It's awesome. Yes, I'll have a Perry burger with extra cheese. <laughs> See if I can find that. This is a beautiful building as well. This is the old side of the uh, Perry Road of Shimoda City. Wow, we have another manhole cover here showing you the black.
It's a black ship there. A lot of onsen I passed along the way. Let's just go down here for a couple of minutes and then we'll wrap this up. Beautiful. Not Tyler Perry, Commodore Perry. Must have been beautiful back then. Again, with all the trade from the U.S., certainly it was a booming uh, little city at the time, just a village. It wasn't, it wasn't too long after that that basically the whole country started to open up. The Meiji Restoration, then the Taisho era, which led, which is a very um, turbulent time historically, a lot of hard feelings, and then... Uh, we moved into the uh, Showa, which brought World War II. Wow, it's just stunning. It's, I, I love the quiet and peacefulness. There's a monument over there. Do you see it in the center? Let's go take a look at that after we just pan around this place here. Matthew's Square, Matthew Perry, I think is a friend's. <laughs> we lost him uh, last year. Looks like they have some steak and sake and some shopping, but you can walk around. Really scenic place, isn't it? Whoosh. Okay, let's walk. Let's walk over to that monument. Part of the Perry family. Oh, look, there's like a, a guided tour in, in progress of Italians. Italiano. All right, do you see this monument here? Probably has some significance, I forget what. I'll film it, but I love how the road just wraps around. Do you see this? It follows the canal or the river. I'm not quite sure, but I would recommend spending the night here. Uh, I'm coming here just, I'm only gonna be here for two, two and a half hours. I, I gotta get back and edit this video, but. All right, this is the temple where they signed the treaty here. So we're gonna walk there. This is our, our uh, final destination on this mini tour of Shimoda. There's a festival that's in May where the, the US military, I think it's the Navy and the Marines, come here and celebrate with the locals the friendship between the US and Japan. I, I, if I can, I'll try to come for that, but let's go inside of the uh, uh, temple grounds here. Take a look. Perry walked from that landing spot to here to sign documents that opened up Japan. Now there's a cafe. Is that a cafe? It's a museum. Everywhere you go in Japan now, it's, it's more tourists than locals for mo the most part. Oh, that's stunning. Very historic building right here, everybody. This is where they signed the documents, Perry and Japan translators. I wonder if, if Manjiro came here. That's one of the things I was wondering. I know he was uh, in, in uh, Yokohama for the signing of uh, the treaty there hiding behind a wall apparently listening to try to confirm the information he was the only japanese that lived in america for any period of time the first japanese to be an american resident and and uh, did a homestay with the captain that saved his life the, where he was shipwrecked on torishima or hurricane island out in the pacific not far from Al Algashima, which i showed you earlier in an episode this is ryosenji temple and I'll read the, the fine print here real quickly. On May 25th, 1854, the main hall of this temple um, was used by Daigaku Hayashi and Commodore Matthew C. Perry of the United States Navy, uh, which concluded the Shimoda Treaty, art, 13 articles appended to the U.S.-Japan Treaty of Peace and Amity, the Kanagawa Treaty, 
uh, which opened up the ports of Shimoda and Hakodate to American vessels and provided for the establishments of consulates in both ports. There was a consulate in Hakodate for the U.S. as well. The treaty designated uh, Gyokosenji Temple. I, I believe Gyokosenji is in, in Hakodate, right? It has a star shape to it. And this temple has resting places uh, for Americans. In the inner part of the left cemetery, there are three graves topped by five-story pagodas. One is for Denshiro Masanaga Imamura, a famous Shimoda magistrate, 1850, 1588 to 1653, and the others are for members of the family. He, excavations behind the temple have yielded human bones, earthenware, and golden bracelets from the late 6th century. That's crazy. The late 6th century, and there's the text right there I just read. So it's a historical spot. Let's see the picture that they have here. Yeah. Well, it was more vibrant back then. There were just more people. Look at the band on the right side. I believe they're playing Star Spangled Banner when they came ashore. The show of power that Perry, Perry did when he came into Tokyo Bay and Uraga Bay, it, 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 it's super impressive. It, I, I think you often win with power. And by showing it, again, uh, Roosevelt uh, speaks softly and carry a big stick. Perry didn't have to say much. He just had to fire the cannons a couple of times into the water for the people to get the idea. Like if they, if they did come uh, and, and start, if we didn't give, uh, co capitulate, we were going to be in some deep doo-doo. And so they did. And it, I mean, it wasn't really a, a bad thing, was it, to open up? They had to eventually. You can walk towards the station in this direction, I believe, but it's much better if you walk along the coast. Right, Teddy Roosevelt said that. It's something that, that the threat of force sometimes is enough as a deterrent. And we can learn that from history. But now everybody has a threat of force, so everybody has a deterrent, perhaps. But there's also a lot of crazy people who might actually use that. Let's just hope that they don't. Oh, look at the streets. Remember the pattern, that crisscross pattern from the buildings that we saw? We have that on the road. Obviously, a, a very good design for this. And you can see now we're, we're kind of in the city. It's more modern. And you can see along the streets, this is where you would tie ships to. But there's no water. Again, a really cool design choice. Very cool. And here's some of the attractions of Shimoda. Uh, we, just, we just went from the Monument of Perry's Landing uh, to Yosenji Temple, and there's a couple of other places. There's a history museum, which is right near here. And um, so we walked. So we just walked Perry Road. We started here, and we walked inland to the temple, and now we're here. And uh, I have to go eventually back to the station here, which is a 15-minute walk, just to give it perspective. It's, it's not a big city, but it's a nice one. What do you, what do you guys think? This is what I do for a living. I kind of uh, go go around and and cover this kind of stuff. It's a, it's a hundred meters, apparently the the to get this direction. So let's go into the back to that rock that we saw the marker. And it, it, it's really interesting to me. I I think I was here 20 years ago, but I, I drove with somebody else, uh, someone that was Japanese here, and I don't think we I was really we didn't have the internet back then when I came here. Not really. You had internet cafes, you didn't have smartphones. So I didn't have all of the information that I, I can get right now, which is really cool. Um, but back then I, I missed a lot. When I came here 26 years ago almost, uh, this year will be the 26th year. It's just, you know, the first 10 years or so, I didn't have internet at home. Barely had, you really hard, most of the, thing, the, most of the things that we learned was word of mouth from other ones, and then guidebooks, which are very quickly outdated.
and we'll walk back a little bit this way. I got to get back to the monument anyways. I was scouting this out, kind of looking for um, some areas. This would be great to do, do the closing scene. Gosh, that's such a very scenic building. I bet you it's really pretty at night. They had the lo a Lonely Planet back then. Of course, everybody did between when I was backpacking in 1996 to about 2003. 2004 was the end of my backpacking career. Everybody had the Lonely Planet. Or in the beginning, they had, uh, in 96, they had something called Let's Go, a yellow book in particular for Europe that had all the countries in there. The information, a little bit sketchy, not really on key sometimes, but that, I guess, led to adventure. I don't have to speak on camera for this, which is good. I, I just have to get some scenes of me walking around and some, some B-roll. So what do you guys think? Why don't you leave me some comments in the description below of Perry Road and this small town. Listen to the music. There's a cafe. Oh, it's a speaker saying that they've opened the shops. I guess it's noon or something like that. 12.30. Cool. Eleven forty-five. All right, I better get to work. They have these speakers mostly as a warning system, but they also use them for announcements in some towns. It just depends on the town. Look at this little bench, and there's a table here where you can have lunch. Look at that. Look at that. Little little bridge here. And then we have the Kawazu Cherry Blossom. This is a perfect place to end. All right, if you guys liked that, hit the subscribe button. I hope that this was useful or informational or just entertaining. It's kind of neat to walk around the old towns, but I'm telling you right now, you don't need to go really fast and get the Shinkansen all the time. And sometimes you just need a regional pass. I'm here on this one. This is the um, a JR East Pass. It was 27,000 yen, which is much cheaper than the uh, a JR Rail Pass, the main one. You can get this in Japan very easily, five days of unlimited travel, including the Shinkansen. Not the Tokaido Shinkansen though, but the other ones. You can go to Niigata, you can go to Nagano with this thing. You can come down here to Shimoda on a very comfortable uh, train that doesn't make any changes, which is what I did. The Od Od Odoroko, Odiroko. I forget the name of the train now. It was a, it was a nice train. You can eat an Eki Ben on that, just like the Shinkansen, and it's slow. It, it, it takes its time, and I think that that's the best way to do it. Uh, I'm going to look for this. This is like the Black Ship Ferry. Apparently they have this around here. That would be really cool if I could find that. And uh, here, I can show you the train really quickly. Um, oh, here it is, the train come leaving the station. <laughs> Here's the train that I got on this morning. This is what it looks like. It's much better than a local train. Uh, it's, it's very comfortable. You, you, get, you get a tray as well. There's no electrical port to charge your stuff. Odori, odori, odoriko. Okay, I just saw the kanji. Odoriko. It, it's a pretty comfortable uh, train here. Kind of like the Shinkansen. Right? It just goes slower, and I think that's kind of a good thing. Um, you can see the, there's the Hokuriku Shinkansen on the other side. Or is that the Yamagata? I always get it a little bit mixed up. It's hard without the, the colors on it. I think that's Hokuriku. Yeah, and this is leaving Tokyo Station. So I'm out Fuji. Beautiful day, blue sky, really nice. Tortoroboku, thank you. Thank you for watching, everybody. I'll see you in another live stream real soon. 
as I make my way back to Tokyo in just like an hour and a half from now, which is crazy. Uh, I'll, I'll put some pictures on Instagram for you to check out as well. Mata ne.